Good afternoon. Oh, come on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sounds mighty good. And welcome to the Spring 23 commencement of the University of Houston Victoria College of Business and College of Education and Health Professions. My name is Brian Gibbs, and it is my great honor to open this ceremony with the singing of the national anthem. Before we get started today, I would like to ask all of you to please silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. First, I'd like to take a moment to thank President Glenn and the graduation community for com committee for allowing me an opportunity to speak today. I stand before you to honor a graduate who happens to be one of the most important people in my life. That man is Bishop Steve Taylor II. For the better part of a decade, Bishop Taylor has supported me and celebrated me in all of my endeavors. He has been a rock of my, in my life and a leader in my support system. In December of 2022, I was blessed to graduate from the University of Houston, Victoria. This was a goal I'd given up on, but through his encouragement and often tough love, I've been able to find the courage and wherewithal within myself to achieve. This is the sign of a true leader. A real leader doesn't just tell you what to do, but helps you find the power that already lies within you. Through the love of God, Bishop Taylor has poured wisdom into me, and he has provided me with a legacy to stand upon. So today, I sing to honor the shoulders upon which Bishop Taylor stands and the endless love and wisdom that was poured into him. Today, I sing to honor Bishop Taylor's parents, Bishop Steve Taylor Sr. and Pastor Cheryl Taylor. It is through them that God has created a firm foundation that we both stand upon. Because of their love, I have been profoundly blessed, and for that, I will be forever grateful. Please stand for the singing of the national anthem. After the anthem, please remain standing for a moment of reflection led by the U of UHV Student Government Associate President, Ms. Kai Martinez. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rampers we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the fellow Jaguars. First, I would like to congratulate you all on reaching this important achievement. It's been quite a journey. I want to applaud you all for persevering and completing your degrees despite the struggles of the pandemic and all other difficulties each of you have faced. Each of you have proved that we as Jaguars are truly exceptional. Now, as we prepare for the future and the journey ahead for each of us, let's take a moment to reflect on the steps that brought us here. Think back on your journey, but don't look back with regret at your struggles. Look back and know that you have come through and moved beyond to something better. Look back and remember all the people who have supported you and encouraged you on your journey. Please join me in this moment of reflection.
Thank you. Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Bob Glenn, and it is my honor and privilege to be the president of the University of Houston, Victoria, and to be the person to welcome you here and acknowledge some special guests that we have here today with us. Joining us in our ceremony are individuals who have su supported UHV throughout the years. I'd like to start by acknowledging some representatives from the President's Regional Advisory Board. This board is a group of outstanding citizens who offer the university administration wise and timely advice on many issues. I would ask them to stand as I call out their names. Russell Kane, Dr. Tina Harrington, and Deborah Williams. Could we have a round of applause for our members? We're also honored and joined today by a distinguished group of administrators who serve on the executive committee of the university. And I would ask them to stand as I call their name. First, the provost, the chief academic officer of the university, Dr. Chance Glenn, vice president for student affairs, Dr. Jay Lambert, the vice president for finance and administration, Dr. Beverly Shuford, Vice President for University Advancement, Amber Countess, and the Interim Vice President for Enrollment Management, Dr. Carla DeCure. Could we acknowledge their presence with a round of applause? I also want to acknowledge Fee Vela, the fiance of our alumni speaker, Robert Royer, right here. Thank you for being here. There's no question but that students are the lifeblood of any university. But if they're the lifeblood, then the heart that pumps that blood is our faculty. You've already seen a faculty representative, our Grand Marshal, Dr. Sandy Veneman, President of the Faculty Senate and Professor of Psychology in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences and of Biology in the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. The Grand Marshal plays an important role in today's ceremony. Please join me in greeting Dr. Veneman. And again, the faculty are what drive the university, provides the life force. So I'd like all the members of our faculty from the College of Business and the College of Education and Health Professions to stand and be recognized, particularly by the students who are assembled here. Members of the faculty, please rise. Now then, there's good news and bad news about today's commencement address. The bad news is I'm your speaker. <laughs> Try not to be disappointed. The good news is that I know you didn't come here to hear me speak. So I will tell you the same thing that Zsa Zsa Gabor once famously said to husband number six out of nine. Don't worry, I won't keep you long. <laughs> I have by my account attended over a hundred commencements during my years in higher education. In my view, it is the very best part of being a university president and it is the very best thing that the university does. I believe the work we do in higher education is important. I genuinely believe education changes lives. I've seen it over and over again. And commencement, no matter how long it lasts or how many hands have to be shaken or how many times we have to pose for a picture, when I leave at the end of the day, I am refreshed to my very core. Commencement does that for me. And it is always a delight when I have a chance to encounter an alum as the years go by and we have a chance to reminisce about their commencement experience. If I ask them about their commencement, they remember vividly the feelings they experienced and who was there for them. 
but sadly, 98% of them or more have no idea who their commencement speaker was or what was said. In my own case, I remember my commencement when I received my doctorate at the University of Alabama. Harper Lee was our commencement speaker. That's right, Harper Lee of To Kill a Mockingbird fame. She was our speaker. I saw her. She stood in front of me. She uttered inspirational words. I am a better man for having been there to hear every one of the words that came out of her mouth, none of which I remember. <laughs> so I'm going to focus today on reminding you during your commencement address on just two or three things. These will be things you already know. But now, when we meet in years to come, and I ask you about commencement, and you remember the things you already knew, then I can take credit for having inspired you. Remember that we start by having a moment of reflection, a moment of silence, in order to center ourselves in this, to become present in this moment and aware of this time to realize where you are and consider all of those who are here with you today, who came to hear your name called, and for you to walk across this stage and say, I'm here. So here's the first thing you already know, that you didn't get here by yourself. You are here with your people. I will go one step further and say that you are here because of your people. There may be a few of you who accomplish this goal all on your own, but for the vast majority of you, you had help. You had people who supported you, who nurtured you, who cheered you on, who did all kinds of things to help you keep going. Nothing of value and lasting worth is ever accomplished alone. As American author and poet Albert Pike said, what we have done for ourselves alone dies with us. What we have done for others and the world remains and is immortal. All great achievements are accomplished with the help of others. So don't leave here today without saying thank you. It is the mark of an educated person to understand the value of being thankful and saying thank you. Before you leave here today, put your arms around your people and say thank you. Now I'm serious, if I find out you didn't, I will come for you. <laughs> I'll just take that degree right back. You'll have to start as a freshman. It'll be very painful. <laughs> the next thing that you already know is that today is a big deal, and so are you. We'll start with this ceremony. There's a reason that we all dress up in robes and go through this pomp and circumstance. The history of commencements goes back well over a thousand years, back to the time that we refer to as the Dark Ages. At that time, it was believed that each person was placed on earth by God for specific reasons. Kings were kings because of divine right. They were chosen to rule. Wherever you were born, whatever station in life you found yourself in, that's where you were meant to be and meant to stay. Almost no one could read, and what books there were were exceedingly rare and only existed in private libraries <clears throat> and monasteries. You couldn't go to a private library because only someone of noble birth could have access to those books. But you could go to a monastery, and you could learn to read and have books there to read. But that required joining the monastery and becoming a part of that monastic order and committing yourself to a way of life. When you join the order, you put on the robe, which was a signal to everyone that you met of who you were and what role you were expected to play. It was a life-changing event. It was meant that you had chosen a path for your life in service. Today's ceremony is meant to be a reflection of that tradition. The faculty wear robes that have come to mean that they selected teaching as their vocation and as their service to others. You are donning robes that are intended to reflect that you are a new person. Granted, you may well have come here with a pretty clear idea of what you wanted to do in life, but you didn't have everything you needed to go down the path you have chosen. 
My hope is that we have aided you in gaining the insights, skills, and knowledge that you needed to be fully engaged in your path. I often say that a great university is one that can take a student from wherever they are to wherever they need to be. My greatest hope is that we have done that for you. We got you to where you needed to be. This ceremony is intended to be a celebration of you being on the cusp of the future you have imagined for yourself. This brings us back around to you and the fact that you're a pretty big deal, especially today. You stand here today on the cusp of doing what comes next. That is part of the reason that today's ceremony is called commencement and not conclusion. You are starting the next chapter and you most certainly are not done. We are proud of you and what you have done. This room is filled with people who are proud of you, but you are not done. You are starting the race, not finishing it. And from here on in, people will continue to be watching what you do. And UHV will be watching what you do because you will be a living and breathing example of what a student who is willing to come here and work hard can do. We are proud, but we expect to be prouder yet. At this point, I want to share the one thing that, I, that you may not already know, but which I believe is a law of human nature. It is a concept that was first outlined by Viktor Frankl in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Frankl was a psychoanalyst in Germany at the outbreak of World War II. He was Jewish. He ended up in a concentration camp for most of the war. He watched as his fellow prisoners struggled with their situation. He saw that some of them came to believe that they were doomed, and so they gave up. They simply waited to die. A smaller number of prisoners did not give up. And even if they perished, they did so on their own terms. He subsequently developed a school of psychotherapy known as logotherapy. The key concept of that therapy is this. Everything can be taken from a person, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances and to choose one's own way. In my own training and experience in the field of counseling, I've seen hundreds of examples that demonstrate the truth of this statement. And I suspect you've seen the same things. People with severe handicaps who made the decision not to let the handicap define who they were. People who were treated cruelly and yet still decided to treat others with kindness. People whose creations were rejected over and over again, who chose not to be discouraged and to persevere until they found the success that they sought. Because you are staying on the cusp of your future, I encourage you to remember that you alone will choose how you will react to what happens to you. You alone will be responsible for the choices that you make. To re you are about to go out and make your way in a world that can be accurately described as contentious and divisive. I don't care whether your politics are red or blue. The simple truth of the matter is that there are bad ideas at both ends of the extremes. And sadly, both ends of the spectrum spend most of their time engaged in name calling and blaming. And it will be demanded of you that you choose one side or the other or else. I would encourage you to remember Frankel's words as you make your choices. You have the right to choose your direction. I encourage you to consider the choice of standing in the middle as you deal with either side. And to look for those things that unite you rather than concentrating on what divides you. This is not the first time in our history that we have faced divisions that threaten to break us apart. But our history has shown that even in the worst of those times, when enough people chose to stand in the middle and reach out in both directions, we have survived the threat of division. The trick, it seems to me, is to learn how to disagree with an idea while still valuing the person standing in front of you. 
It really is possible to reject ideas without rejecting people. It is hard, but it is worth the effort. You are now entitled to think of yourself as an educated person, but it requires more than just making the claim. You can claim to be a good swimmer, but it is only when you get thrown into the deep end of the pool that we can see objectively if that claim is true. An educated person has obtained certain abilities. One of these abilities is the ability to hold conflicting ideas in their heads at the same time. Another is the ability to allow someone to hold their own view without being threatened by that. And there is the ability to treat all persons with civility and respect, even when they don't accept your views. But the key ability, in my view, is the ability to reach a compromise that allows you both to go forward while keeping your heads up. One of the things that makes this country so great is that we have found ways to do that in the past. We are clearly having difficulties now, but the future has not been written. And so one final reminder, you are the future. You have the freedom to make your own choices. I argue again that an education person goes to the middle and reaches out to both sides. I encourage you to consider your choices carefully. Okay, I'm gonna step down off the soapbox now. Just a quick recap. Today, big deal. You, big deal. All your people here with you, a very big deal. The future ahead, the horizon is open. You have choices to make. Good luck and Godspeed. Now I'll call, thank you. I'd now like to welcome Dr. Chance Glenn, our UHV provost, to move forward to introduce this year's honors recipients and then move us forward to what you came here for. Thank you, President Glenn. I would first direct your attention to page eight in your program to view the list of those faculty recognized by their students and peers for excellence in teaching, research, and service. They are Jacob Snyder, Hardik Gohill, and Umberto Hernandez. If they're here today, would ask that they would stand as they should be commended uh, for making a difference in the lives of our university and our students. I would like to recognize the outstanding students for the spring of 2023, selected by the College of Business and the College of Education and Health Professions. These students were chosen based on their academic records and related achievements. If the following students are here, would you please stand? The outstanding students for the College of Business are Franklin II, outstanding graduate student, and William Joseph Patton, outstanding undergraduate student. The outstanding students for the College of Education and Health Professions are uh, Jarveron Bruce Thomas, outstanding graduate student, and Rachel Anderson, outstanding undergraduate student. <laughs> UHV definitely has outstanding students. Those graduating with honors have shown special dedication to their studies. These undergraduate candidates are wearing gold braids over their robes, and their names are listed in your program. I am pleased to recognize them today. Candidates graduating cum laude with honor have grade point averages of 3.5 to 3.67 on a four-point scale. Will those graduating cum laude please stand and be recognized at this time?
Thank you. Those undergraduates graduating magna cum laude with high honor have GPAs of 3.68 to 3.84. Please stand so that we may recognize you. All right, you may be seated. Finally, those graduating summa cum laude with highest honor have a 3.85 GPA or higher. Congratulations on this outstanding achievement. Please stand so that we may honor you. Congratulations, please be seated. Next, I would call your attention to student members of academic honor societies and the UHV Honors Program. These students are wearing cords or stoles to indicate membership in these societies, which are listed in page seven of your program. Graduates of the Honors Program completed an extensive curriculum supplementing their normal academic work while maintaining a high GPA. They're wearing gold medallions designating their achievement. Would all of the student members of these honor societies and the honors program please stand and be recognized at this time? Please be seated. You may have also noticed graduates wearing red, white, and blue intertwined graduation cords. These we call our Patriot Cords. These individuals are wearing the Patriot Cord because they are veterans and active service members of the U.S. Armed Forces. At this time, we ask that all graduating veterans and active service members, as well as any others in the building, please stand and be recognized. UHV thanks and salutes you for your service to our country. Thank you, thank you, please be seated. We have also with us graduating international students who are proudly wearing a sash representing their countries of citizenship. International students are those enrolled at UHV on an F and J student visa status, and we are honored to have them with us as graduates. Please stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you, thank you. In addition, we have some special graduates who are wearing Jaguar Spirit Corps. These generous students are participating in our Jags Give Back program, and we appreciate their support of UHV. If you're one of these, please stand and be recognized at this moment. Thank you. If you notice students with teal cords, these are our first gen graduation cords, which denote students who are the first generation in their family to complete a four year degree. Please join me in honoring these students who chose to take a new step and change their future by earning a degree. If you're a first generation, please stand. Congratulations, congratulations. And now, the candidates for degrees will be presented. <laughs> candidates for the College of Business will be presented by the college's Associate Dean, Dr. Jifu Wang. 
Candidates for the College of Education and Health Professions will be presented by the Dean, Dr. Rachel Martinez. Will the candidate of Bachelor of Business Administration, Master of Accountancy, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Science degrees please rise. On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements of the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degree be conferred. Please be seated. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science Bachelor of Science in Education, Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Master of Education, and Master of Science degrees, please rise. On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Please remain standing and would all the other graduates please rise as well. Will the faculty and platform party please rise? President Glenn, it is my distinct honor to present these degree candidates who are students in good standing with the University of Houston, Victoria, and have completed all the requirements for their respective degrees as set forth by the faculty of the university. I recommend that these degrees be conferred. All right, students, I would remind you once again to be present, to be here right now fully aware of what is about to happen and who is here with you. By the authority vested in me by the state of Texas and on behalf of the faculty of the Colleges of Business and Education and Health Professions, I now confer upon each of you and upon those graduating in absentia your respective degrees with all rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of the University of Houston, Victoria. You may be seated. Just a word of instruction. Graduates, your undergraduate marshal is about to lead you forward. You'll come over here and give your card to the card reader for the College of Business. That will be Dr. Ron Salazar. 
of the College of Education. That will be Dr. Joanne Olson. They will then call your name as best they can. <laughs> and you will walk out to right here in the middle where I'll be standing and waiting on you. You don't have to shake my hand, but it helps. <laughs> then the provost and your dean will be standing just beyond me. Again, you don't have to shake their hands, but they, they won't feel good if you don't. You'll then walk over here and they'll take another picture suitable for framing. Now, uh, family members, parents, spouses, you're all welcome to take pictures from where you are. I would remind you that when the ceremony is over, you'll have plenty of time if you want to come up and take particular pictures. But we need to talk for just one second about something that almost always happens at a commencement. You're going to have graduates who are expectant and who are proud, and I know you're proud of them and you're excited to be here, and their name is going to be called, and some of you, some scurrilous family member who's going to seek to embarrass that poor graduate. They're going to call out, hoop, holler, make loud noises, do all kinds of things. And I, I just want to say, I think it's important that you hear from the president of the university. That is perfectly all right. OK, this is a celebration. It's not a funeral. You make all the noise you want. Graduates, as you come forward, if you want to dance a jig between the card reader and me, you go, hey, what's the worst that can happen? You can't embarrass me. I would remind all of you, you are, after all, in a church. Please don't get me into any more trouble than I'm already in. But this is a great day. We are proud. Undergraduate marshals, if you would bring the graduates forward, congratulations. I look forward to shaking your hand. It is now my honor to present those students earning an undergraduate degree from the College of Business, Vermund Arvig. Thank you. Jermaine Abrams. Mark Gabriel Alvarado. Mitchell Harley. Jamie Bailey. Teresa Oyin Consola Bashuron. Kashela Mayan Bates. I need your card. Kyle Warren Bitterly, summa cum laude. Jonathan David Bame. Charles Irvin Brown. Monica Edith Camarillo. Ethan Carrion 
summa cum laude. Matthew Scott Caton. Rian Ali Shihede. Paige Mackenzie Della Shulock. Charles Dale, congratulations. Krista Diana Danistan. Kayla De Los Santos. Vincent Paul De La Garza. Crystal Michelle Denman. Andres Espinosa. Jamie Brooke Feemster, summa cum laude. David J. Feldman. Michaela Fernandez. Curtis Foster. Dawson Fry. Shisia Elizabeth Fuentes. Anthony Rene Garcia, summa cum laude. Jamie Michelle Garza. <laughs> Kayla Gerald, summa cum laude. Thank you. Man Jiang, summa cum laude. Daisy Elizabeth Gonzalez, cum laude. Marianne Gonzalez. Selena Alicia Gray. Ashley Pamela Guzman, magna cum laude. Miguel Angel Hernandez, Jr. Blessing Ekimopa. Abby Naomi Farpon. Jose Jimenez Antonio Cum Laude. Haley Faith Kemper. Kelly Rose Kinnear, Summa Cum Laude. Leah Nora Lerma. Woo! Mia Lerma. Woo! Jacqueline Haley Lidiak. Woo! 
Ashley Catlin Lopez. Congratulations. Uyana Luco. Mariela Martinez. Modesto Martinez. John Trent McComas, magna cum laude. Malik Merchant, cum laude. Fabio Andres Montano, cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Morales. William Joseph Patton, summa cum laude, an outstanding undergraduate student. <laughs> Bianca Ernestine Ortega, magna cum laude. <laughs> Matthew Ryan Olmos. Kelly Riando Obregón. Alexis Nunez. Christiane Elizabeth Nichols, magna cum laude. Salmina Music. Summa cum laude. Mary Leona Moritz. Damian Roberson, magna cum laude. Refi? Lena Refi. Bonnie Marie Antoinette Price Gettings. Roberto Alejandro Portillo Reynolds. Janeth Pineda. William James Petrosky, magna cum laude. <laughs> Bianca Analicia Perez, cum laude. <laughs> Alejandro Adrian Peña. <laughs> Carla Mariela Pedraza de Leon. <laughs> Katie Lynn Sparkman, cum laude. <laughs> Luis Sosa. <laughs> Steven Silva. <laughs> Caitlin Alexandra Scott. Yasmin Serenana. <laughs> Hannah Shreira Sanduha. <laughs> Tony Ray Salinas. Destiny Devanji Salinas. Yeah. 
Lawrence Albert Rodriguez. Israel Rocha. Ni Omaya Biscara, magna cum laude. Sophia Ines Dinas, summa cum laude. Thomas Michael Terrazas, summa cum laude. Jessica Talwar. <laughs> Kayla Jo Michelle Stock. Autumn Nicole Stewart, magna cum laude. It is now my honor to present students receiving their master's degree from the College of Business. <laughs> Kelly Denise Adair. Oseratin Adua. Amanda Nicole Odisola. <laughs> Muhammad Ashfaq. <laughs> Zuneria Asif. Tiffany Lee Ballard. <laughs> Peyton Nicole Belzeski. <laughs> Jose Umberto Bernal, Jr. <laughs> Iram Bolanos. <laughs> Alba Bove. <laughs> Kadeem Nicole Brinkley. Preethi Chintala. Cameron Cantrell Coleman. Jacob Matthew Collin. Monique Tarba Cooper. <laughs> Donna Correa de Weird Von Worthe. <laughs> 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 
Ana Cruz. Beatriz de la Torre. Vanessa Oralia Dixon. Taylor Nicole Edwards. Jamal Eldam. Antoinette Rosé Everett. Abigail Falekulo. Dua Fatima. Jasmine Foruji. Jerrica Ellis Freeman. Astrid Jerusa Gamara Vallejo. Gunel Garayeva. Logan Garris. Cesar Augusto Gonzalez. Guo Badia. Osase Cyril Gubadaya. Sevinch Zay Nali Gustin. Caitlin Siobhan Hanscom. Terry Wayne Hardiman. Jaime Gustavo Erren La Torre. <laughs> Alyssa Brianna Hill. Mason James Humphrey. Kehendi Abiola Ibarula. Paras Jaffrey. Valerie Ann Cott. Tammy Lee Lerma. Ashanta Raynette. <laughs> Ashanta Raynette Lewis. Alicia Denise Love. Jose David Maradiago.
Simran Mare Dia. Miss, Miss, may I have your card? Is that you? Sermran Maradia. Gloria Masiala. Almiar Montales. Victor Mesa. <laughs> Munata Mansur. <laughs> Eddie Osvaldo Moreno. Robin Michelle Moten. <laughs> Jessica Munga. <laughs> Naheda Raif Nasser. Jim Navarrete. Yen Thi Thuk Nguyen. Lisa Normant. Carmen Joanne North. Esses Amor Orbuyo Mito. <laughs> Emmanuel Rilwan Ohi Api. <laughs> Sahara Cristel Opoku. Himali Shurespai Patel. Sandria Patterson. Ali Ahmed Polani. Brian Ramirez. Michelle Renee Revels. Rita K. Rhodes Cotton. Michael Ansara Richmond. Dashlin Joanne Riveros. Thesa Rodriguez da Silva. Sasha Seka Batmandi. Shake. Shake. Yasser Mahmoud Shake. Yeah. 
Robin Renee Shelton. Musamil Mohammed Siddiqui. Miller Andres Silva. Steve Taylor Jr. Laura Toro. Nan Hahi Tran. Selena Wagner. Christina L. Wills. Grace E. Withers. Anam Zaidi. Samira Danani. Syed Mohammed Fawad Ali Zaidi. It is now my honor to announce the names of those receiving bachelor's degrees from the College of Education and Health Professions. Elena Gloria Aguirre. <laughs> Rachel Marie Anderson, summa cum laude, outstanding student. Amanda Fern Atkin, summa cum laude. Sarah E. Bounds, cum laude. Bailey Leanne Brown. Morgan Lynn Brown. <laughs> Melissa, Melissa Brianna Bullock, summa cum laude. Jadira Campos Quintanilla, cum laude. Madeline Victoria Capristo. Kira D. Cardenas, summa cum laude. Tiffany Leanne Cessna, cum laude. Tori Page Chapa. Samantha Costilla, cum laude. Aliyah R. De Los Santos.
Maria De La Rosa, summa cum laude. Crystal Garcia, summa cum laude. Erica Danielle Garcia, summa cum laude. Lolita Blair Garcia, cum laude. Mitzi Yarele Garcia, magna cum laude. Alyssa Jordan Garza. Alexis Michelle Gonzalez. Soon K. Harrison. Amanda E. Harvey. Nicole Brooke Heschler. Wendy Nicole Hughes, magna cum laude. <laughs> Lucinda Marie Hamrayo, summa cum laude. Carson Andrew Cabela. Ryan Elizabeth Cater. Taylor Renee Krupa. Amber Nicole Landry. Jasmine Janae Harper. <laughs> Selena Hernandez. <laughs> Chelsea Michelle Macedonio, summa cum laude. Isabel Mantini, magna cum laude. Macy Jean Marek, cum laude. Alejandra Martinez, magna cum laude. Sandra Karina Martinez, cum laude. <laughs> Cynthia Selena Mata, magna cum laude. <laughs> Bailey Ann McGrath. Sarah Marie Mullenix. Gabrielle Aaliyah Muller. Mariah Alyssa Munoz, cum laude.
Nicole Teresa Paredes, magna cum laude. Amber Olivia Puska. Allison Ray Reyes. Veronica Reyes, cum laude. Sandy Lizette Rios, summa cum laude. Trinice Marie Banks Robinson, summa cum laude. Brooke Rosemond Salazar. Victoria Lynn Smith. Kayla Marie Snyder. Alyssa Nicole Solis. Nicole Thompson, cum laude. Maria Lynn Trevino. It's now my honor. It's now my honor to announce one graduate from the College of Natural and Applied Science, Master of Science, Paul Miller. And I'll now be announcing the names of those receiving master's degrees from the College of Education and Health Professions. Karama Alawani Burgal. <laughs> Lauren Bree Chalka. Cynthia J. Chamberlain. <laughs> Natasha Andrea Cook. Abibatu Dabo. Hey. Earl Felix Lim De Jesus. Brienne Michelle Dockery. <laughs> Rachel Figueroa.
Alexa Fuentes. Jennifer Ruby Hernandez. Trinity C. Hernandez. <laughs> Stephanie Lynn Esquerdo. <laughs> Alyssa Nicole Kratz. Jessica Marie McLemore. <laughs> Rick Cal Monroe. <laughs> Charisma Montoya. Mallory B. Moore. Yeah. Lauren Hillary Mazashik. Shanika Jante Miles. Christine Ibarro Savannas Ocon. Vanessa Peralta. Chelsea Lee Priestmeyer. Brandy Michelle Reeder. Adriana Sabel Rivas. Ruth Amanda Rodriguez. Maria Saavedra. Tanya Renee Shulak. Sarah Elizabeth Swinford. <laughs> Javaran Bruce Thomas, outstanding student. Jennifer Urban. Yeah. 
Lauren Ann White. Yvonne Zuniga. <laughs> Sarah Hosry. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of the University of Houston, Victoria. <laughs> Undergraduate Graduates, it is now appropriate for you to move your tassel to the left. The tassel on the left side of a mortar board signifies that you are a recipient of a degree of higher learning. If you are wearing a UHV class ring, you also may turn your ring so that the seal faces away from you. Congratulations again to all of our degree recipients and welcome to the company of educated people. Let's give our graduates one last round. Okay, again, today, big deal. You, big deal. All right, graduates, you now join more than 23,000 alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. We invite you to become active alumni to keep close ties to your alma mater. We want to hear from you and what you are doing as you continue to make your mark on the world. It is now our pleasure to induct this graduated class into the alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. I would like to invite Robert Royer, a UHV alumnus and president and founder of Building Brands Marketing, to induct the, 20, the spring 2023 graduating class. Mr. Royer earned his bachelor's degree in business administration at UHV in 2014. Mr. Royer. Dear fellow alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria, it's an honor to stand in front of you today and celebrate the achievements of the class of 2023. You've all worked incredibly hard to earn your degree, and you've shown dedication and determination in the face of challenges and adversity. At the same time, many of you were balancing part-time or full-time jobs, or in some cases, even families. I know myself how difficult that can be. But today is not just about looking back. It's also about looking forward to the future and making your mark in society. As you embark on the next chapter of your life, understand that the strength of the alumni and the university depends on the strength of you. It's time to execute and drive forward to creating your next opportunity. Always stay connected to UHV so we can make the most of our education and ties to this wonderful university. This institution has played a significant role in shaping who you are today, and it will continue to be an important life or part of your life as an alumnus. So stay involved, stay engaged, and give back to the community that has given you so much, and this community will continue to take care of those that take care of this community. In closing, 
I want to congratulate each one of you for this momentous achievement. Let's get to work. Let's support each other's growth as fellow UHV alumni. Thank you, and go Jags. And now I would like everyone to stand, and if you would take your program and turn to the last page of the program, or watch the screens above and join Brian Gibbs in the singing of the UHV alma mater. The music was recorded for UHV by the Crossroads Community Band based in Victoria. Once the alma mater is finished, please remain standing for the benediction. And graduates, I will be watching to see if your lips are moving. to leave you with a Franciscan benediction. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out to your, your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God be bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all of our children and the poor. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. It takes a great deal of planning and advanced work to make a commencement like this work. And many people have been working on a regular basis since January planning and taking care of details for today's event. I wonder if we could have a round of applause for all the staff and faculty who've worked to make this a good day for you. And again, to our graduates, let me say how proud we are of you. You are now and always will be the sons and daughters of UHV, and we look forward to seeing what you do next. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, thank you for joining us for this commencement ceremony. We would ask that you all remain seated during the recession of the President's party and, gra and um, graduates. Again, graduates, good luck, Godspeed.